Welcome to Texas! He's a 10. I choose this family. Hey guys, welcome to episode 88 of 911 Lone Star Roundup. I'm one of your hosts, EJ, and with me are my lovely co hosts, Katie. Hey guys. And Grace. Hello, everyone. Today we'll be talking about episode seven of season four of 911 Lone Star titled Tommy Dearest. There's a lot to talk about, so let's just get to it. Um, we start the episode with, I guess, nighttime. Paul is not able to sleep, so he's down in the kitchen on um, at the table. He's texting a friend, quote unquote, friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we know who it is. It's Asha from last episode the last few episodes and owen comes down and he's like you know asking him about it and paul's like you know owen thinks it's marjan it's not <laughs> and so paul's like no it's a friend from chicago he's like marjan doesn't have good cell service out in the desert so we kind of know where she's so far headed and um owen asks if he happens to know when she's coming home and paul's kind of just like i think she's just still figuring it out so I'm, like, I'm hoping she comes back at some point i know we're gonna get her in a couple of like next episode but i already miss her <laughs> I know. know it's so weird not having her yeah like uh, it's not like i forgot about her existence but like you know we didn't get her last episode we got like a mention this episode but we also didn't get her and i'm just like not that i forgot she existed but i'm also like damn i kind of did forget and i'm like right. i miss her yeah yep. and paul i almost called him brian <laughs> well, <laughs> my brain is I was like, not, t- not technically inaccurate true um <laughs> paul asks owen what he's up for and owen's like oh some work he's like um talking about how he's helping plan the wedding for TK and Carlos and he's like God bless TK and Carlos but they're such rookies I mean you survived two weddings of your own you know things right <laughs> oh my god <laughs> this is the Except- start of like father of the groom dadzilla whatever whatever they're calling it yeah dadzilla yeah um don't don't do your one too much Owen um you didn't stay married so yeah. don't act like you yeah. know everything <laughs> good one yeah maybe uh, just not, like, like keep your good. advice to the wedding <laughs> do not t- offer advice about the marriage oh <laughs> yes good I point. agree with good that point. Yes. very good All point right. other than just to, it, unless you're saying things that you learned from you not doing that in the right. marriage that's and it don't like, follow my mistakes don't yeah. don't do what <laughs> whatever owen and his past wives did yeah <laughs> don't right <laughs> Oh God, thoughts. <laughs> thoughts. Okay, moving on. <laughs> moving on. So for the whole conversation, Paul's phone keeps like vibrating and you can kind of hear it. And Owen's like, man, you know, whoever this is might, it seems to be more than just a friend, especially because Paul, every time he talks about who he's talking to, he like lights up and gets excited. Mm-hmm. And Paul mentions it's a she. And then, of course, you know, Owen gets in uh, more interested. And Paul's like, no, 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 it's nothing like that. And Owen's like, yeah, no. <laughs> but, I don't know. I, I'm still on the fence with it. I know, like, why she came into the show is because of the whole Marjan situation. Um, oh, and yeah, I yeah. love that she has a connection with, like, Paul's past. And obviously, part of this episode, there's, you know, they talk about it. But, yeah. Or it comes up. And I don't know. I just... We've been asking for Paul to have a girlfriend for so long that, like, now that it's here, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be okay with this. Yeah, like, my, I don't know, uh, like, my thoughts on it, like, yeah, she gave, like, a little bit iffy feelings the other episode, and, like, I know, like, I don't know, like, yeah, like... I don't know. In that episode, I kind of felt iffy about it because we were getting like the, I guess, professional side. So yeah, she had to be kind of not like mean, but she had to be like kind of a like bit uh, of a hard ass. At least yeah, yeah, very professional exactly. and stern. Which is nothing out of her fault or anything. Even I don't know. Then it was just like mm, I don't know if I like her, but like you know, like mm-hmm. going into this episode, I was excited to see what they did with them, what what they showed of her, and like. I don't know. I was like very open and just I I don't know. It's like about time they like explored this, oh, yeah, even totally. if it doesn't work out. And like I was excited, but like I don't know. We'll like obviously talk about it as we right. get further about exactly you know, our thoughts on it. But like I don't know. I was interested, very interested. Yeah, I'm happy for him if if this works out for him. Yeah. So then their conversation is interrupted by this man and woman who come in. Uh, the <laughs> the man is pushing <laughs> this woman on a dolly she's currently like attached upside down <laughs> <laughs> and owns like uh that's kind of dangerous with having somebody you know upside down and then he sh- they say, explain that every time she's laid flat or tries to stand up she dies 
she flatlines. And so everybody, the paramedics and all of them and the firefighters are trying to like figure out, like asking all these questions and they're like, what happened when this happened? Like when, when what did it happen? And I think at one point the woman's just like, oh, just, just, we're all adults here. It's like we were having sex. <laughs> yeah i know like it's funny because it's always the man that's like so embarrassed it's like come on <laughs> now and it's always the woman be like come on like right. you know like and to actually like say it <laughs> right and so Tommy's i think like, after like a lifetime of like just talking like about our periods and like having oh, like yeah. different stuff like having to be open about like what the heck is happening with our bodies we just don't give a crap anymore right we're just like deal with it especially when you guys have a part in it yeah that's true yeah. um so tommy has they they want to lay the lady down so that she can get in it like see what's happening and she literally flatlines the minute she's flat uh so they s- sit her back up and then she, then of course the woman mentions um you know i, I wonder if it has anything to do with my pacemaker well you should have led with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah literally literally and i loved how like you could see in the background paul looking at owen and goes that can happen oh yeah i forgot <laughs> about that part i was like oh my god because paul you know has one now yeah, um, i know and uh you know so they end up kind of diagnosing that possibly one of the pacemaker um wiring got um disconnected from the pacemaker inside of her so they had to take her to the hospital but they couldn't just take her in the ambulance because it's not tall enough. They couldn't take her in the truck. So they ended up mounting her on the back of the fire truck. <laughs> I was just like, I looked at my roommate when we were watching it. She's like, they're doing what? I know. I was like, I was like, are you kidding? Like, I was, I was interested to see how they were going to solve this because this was, of course, like in like multiple seasons ago in Grey's Anatomy, and people were like talking about because I knew I saw this somewhere, and my friend was like, and then people were like saying, no, it was in that, and I, we were like, okay, well that makes sense, and I was just like, hmm, I wonder how they're going to do it because. I don't know. It was interesting, and I was like, "Of course, that's how they get her there." Okay, well, that was interesting. It was, it was good. Like I, I was, it was interesting. Yeah, Um, yeah. Like it was, it was a, it was a funny emergency. I don't know if "funny" is fully the right word, but like it was an emergency, not too serious. Um, I do find it mind blowing that she got the pacemaker a year ago, and not one single person in the know about that stopped to think that this could be a pacemaker issue right if you got it like 15 years ago or something and you're used to forgetting about it maybe Mm -hmm. but how is when your heart stops you don't immediately go to the thing that is helping your heart run Get the, yeah, I know. You should have led with that. That would have been so much easier. Like, I know, I know it drew out the suspense, so I'm not actually, like, grading on it or anything. But I'm just, like, realistically speaking, as someone who knows someone with a pacemaker, I'm like, do you think to, to just, like, think for a yeah. second? I know. Oh, yeah. But it was funny, nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was. So our kind of next scene is Tommy... Trevor and the girls Tom and Trevor is really nervous he's cooking in the kitchen um they've kind of started dating the girls are in Tommy's uh in some part of Tommy's house all three of them twins and Trevor's daughter having fun and Trevor is nervous but over dinner they try to tell the girls that they've started dating and they're like you know if you guys don't like this idea please speak up all of them say it's great we're happy for you yeah but then as soon as Tommy is alone with Trevor's daughter, I don't remember what her name is. Melody. 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 She basically threatens Tommy to break up with Trevor or else. And I was uh, like, how old is she? Like 10, 12, something? I'm like, and, and you're threatening an adult? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that was. That I was, was like, so... what is this girl on? Like, what's I know. she find in the play yard? Right. I know. That's like everyone was saying. They were like, this girl, like, what the heck? I'm like, mm-hmm. what do you think you you have to hold over her? Like, come on now. Well, we li- we later find out, but um, yeah. it's certainly you're 12 and your threat. You have like gall to like this is very unusual. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I this is going to be interesting. I'm not sure how to feel about it. Yeah, I know. Uh, so we next see. 
Tommy telling Jed and Grace about this. And uh, I think what I love part about the scene is that Jed is folding all the clothes. I know. <laughs> love it. <laughs> like loving that. Um, As you should. You know, and Jed, she's telling Jed and Grace about what happened. And Jed's like calling this melody a bad seed. And Grace is like, Jed, don't talk about the pastor's daughter like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> Like, that was oh, so true <laughs> remarkably funny actually <laughs> yeah it was i, I loved right. judd in this like and yeah. grace trying to calm down like dead dead yeah mm-hmm. just calm Settle down a second yeah. <laughs> she right. was mediating a little bit yeah because like tommy and judd were feeding off of each other on that i know like, i feel like hey, yeah no. Yeah, because I feel like Judd kind of flies off the handle sometimes with the things he says, and Grace is more of the, obviously the more like you know, I, I don't know how to put it, but like <laughs> you know, she's more I guess cautious or she's more respectable about when she says things. She's she's kind of like she keeps everything calm. I guess is a good way to put right. it. <laughs> we balance each um, other well. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, and in this, you know, Tommy is also kind of understanding where Melody's coming from because Tommy's parents are also divorced and she remembers what it was like when the parents divorced. Because I was, I was trying to explain to my roommate and, you know, because she watches the show with me and you know, it's different for Tommy's girls because their dad has passed away. There's no chance of their parents mm-hmm. getting back together. But it's very common for kids to want to get their parents back together when they're divorced. Oh, yeah. Parent yeah. trap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like love the parent like i am yeah, also I a child of divorce mm-hmm. my circumstances are a little unusual as in i would have paid money for my parents to never interact again <laughs> oh gosh wow but that is simply because even as a child i knew how bad things were and yeah. also i was 13 when they separated and 16 when they divorced i was more than old enough to know mm-hmm. what was happening for right. younger yeah. children that's a different thing yeah. Right. Yeah. Melody's old enough to understand yeah. what's happening, but especially since it looked like we don't know the circumstances, or I don't think we know the circumstances of their divorce, but yeah. it doesn't look like it was as volatile as like my parents' mm-hmm. divorce, for example. Right. So there's a lot less alienation against the the concept of her parents being together, and so especially if she's not young, like old enough to know everything that happened, it's a lot more confusing. So like I can't blame her. I don't even remember if we knew that Tommy's par- like parents were divorced between before yeah. now, but I love I this tidbit. I yeah. was thinking about it, and I think it might have been briefly mentioned, but it was nothing yeah, ever like, to it like. It came up in passing. I, I think it did come up in passing, but I just can't remember the context or anything. But I think it yeah. did. Um, well, yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I, I actually was really surprised to have trevor have his daughter because i know a lot of states are like side with the mother usually in custody so for him to have his daughter um yeah. makes me wonder like what happened with the mom and like well, yeah so there's a lot of questions i have the on mom that side. well in the first episode like um of the season like i remember like him saying that like he like they let melody choose where she was gonna go so mm-hmm. i guess like it's probably just like at the age where you can choose yeah. Yeah, once you hit like no. er- early teens, close to teens, preteens, they usually give you more of a decision. Yeah, and it also could have like even without that, there are a bunch of different reasons besides like because not all parents are on an equal standpoint. He had like a stable job. Yeah. He had like he and titles like pastor do carry some hold on them. Right. The mom could have not been in a stable position. Uh, yeah. I was thinking, because I didn't remember them saying that Melody had chosen. And I was thinking before this, I'm like, well, maybe the mom didn't try and fight for custody. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that cool. can be a mind warp in and of itself for a child to be like, mm-hmm. my parent doesn't want me. So that could have added a whole nother thing. But if she chose yeah. where she wanted to be, that's yeah. a different story. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um... Closing out this scene, we have Tommy commenting that she maybe thinks that her and Trevor should cancel the date they have the next night. And Grace, I love Grace. Grace is like, no, ma'am, you're not going to go. She's like, you're going to go and you're going to tell Trevor what she's doing because Melody is a kid and should be reprimanded for doing this. Like, she's literally threatening an adult. (laughs) Like, that's not cool. Yeah. Um, And then our following scene is we're at the 126 and Asha shows up and she's there to close out the case. Which you know everybody kind of crowd crowds around. It's like, oh, they drop you know drop the case. What what's going on? Um, and she explains that um, the Geralds dropped the case because their 
uh, attempt at blackmailing the department failed miserably when Marjan made it um, the news public. <laughs> Snaps for her. We love her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, so <laughs> Owen invites Asha upstairs and Asha and Paul kind of have this like, she's like, oh, hi, firefighter Strickland. And he's trying to like casually say hi to her. And then like Owen offers her something to drink that has something in it she's allergic to. But Paul jumps in and is like, no, she's allergic to that. And Paul's like, she, she very well might um, have an allergy. <laughs> yeah oh god that was real smooth <laughs> this was, was really awkward to watch it was it really it was, was anything, you're goddamn like you're you're an adult okay surely you have some like yeah. fluidity to interaction like yeah uh, it was funny but it was so awkward right yeah i was i was cringing a little um and so after asha and owen go upstairs everybody else nancy paul judd Mateo, I'll turn to him and we're like, you know, you know her, <laughs> like what's going on? You know, and I, even TK says there was totally sparks there. I just love like, yeah. you know, like them all like looking at him and it's just like, oh yeah, this is just how it is. <laughs> Which is, this is kind of where the, it starts. So Paul um, explains after, you know, being, oh. I don't know, corralled for <laughs> a few minutes <laughs> um, that they know each other um and tk's like oh you met in college and he's like no we actually met in grade school back in chicago and nancy's like oh so you recognized her and paul's like no she recognized me and he's like so now they're reconnecting and they're all like oh my god it's destiny and paul's like you really think so and they're like uh yeah and they're like she's totally into you i was like okay I, yeah I, yeah also so, can we just take a moment to say that like asha is gorgeous i know i was yeah. just about to say the same she thing is. Oh my God, like everything aside that woman is so pretty and i, I have those, like skin hair for jean i <laughs> like, yeah really um i recognize uh, her too but i can't place her so i'll have to look up and find out what other I know, yeah, she's been i kind of do too so, yep i'm i'm working on that hang on <laughs> <laughs> we love it we love it chris i'm uh, back to googling uh, Google Chris. Uh, so she is played by Amanda Payton. I'm looking her up. I assume my computer cooperates and wants to freeze. Phone. Okay. Listen, I am dedicated. <laughs> I know. That's like every time I see anybody in the show, I'm like, okay, I gotta Google. Right. Um, well, and yeah, I'll do that too, or I'll turn to my roommate and like, is that so and so? And she looks at me like, you think I'm gonna know? <laughs> You're the one that knows all these people. I was like, mm-hmm. it's like, so I'll be sitting there watching whatever movie we're watching, and I'll be googling everybody that's an actor, actress in the show. Me with everything. Um, let's see. Been in a bunch of very different stuff. Oh yeah, I just looked it up too. She's been, She's in, like, been almost everything I've watched. Numbers, um, trial and error, code 404, or United States of Al. Yeah, she's been in a lot of stuff. Um, all right, so our, their, our next like emergency call is another pizza call. It's a little different than the last time. I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this pizza guy shows up with pizza from that place uh we had last season the swords and slices okay i never connected that i don't know why i didn't connect that because yeah. i usually connect it's things. the same yeah same pizza yeah, place as the i guess night oh guy. the medieval yeah. one I, co- yeah. I connected that too i was like is this yeah. i guess i just wasn't is really thinking about it i think i couldn't remember if the medieval one was a lone star one or a 911 one so i was like mm okay am i am i thinking of the right one but like the whole medieval thing either they're being off each other's idea or it's the same thing right so he's delivering this pizza he rings on the doorbell he makes his announcement apparently this announcement he has to say and no one responds and he does it a few more times and it sounds to me like it's somebody he's maybe delivered pizza before consistently or regularly and so he finally peeks inside to see why she's not answering the door and she's on the ground and it looks like she's having a seizure. So he calls 911 and she's like, and Grace answers the phone and she has to basically teach him and walk him through how to break into the house so he can save her um, because she's going into di- a diabetic coma and he needs to give her insulin. And <laughs> so he does actually get inside. He definitely struggled to get the door broken down, but 
he somehow managed it and he does administer the glucose shot which is i would not recommend that for a diabetic unless you're really really needing it uh and of course when the lady wakes up the first her her first reaction is to grab her taser and knock him down with her taser <laughs> i know honestly. i was like of course yeah and he's still on the phone with grace when this happens so then all of a sudden the woman <laughs> jumps up and calls 911 too so they get another call because she's like somebody broke into my house and he was standing over me <laughs> i was like <laughs> oh my god and i'm then- sorry did she not stop to think about the fact she was on the floor yeah like I know. Did, she, did she not like i i get like the initial panic and kind of block out thoughts sometimes but at the same time it's like does not it seem weird on your end about this yeah yeah or that why he was holding a glucose shot like yeah yeah Um, like yeah i guess she was real out of it then yeah so grace is able to catch him and if she's avoided people for the most part then yeah i think the pizza guy did mention he thinks she's a shut-in so she doesn't normally answer the phone he just leaves it on the front stoop and leaves right Um, and she usually says she doesn't go outside and she said she doesn't go outside either so yeah um because bad things happen yeah so grace is able to patch in to Bree's call with the lady and explains what happened so then Grace has to walk the woman through how to resuscitate the guy who's been, um, you know, knocked unconscious. Because after he started to wake up, she zapped him again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, yep. right. Yeah. So TK, Nancy, and Tommy get there and they start treating him and kind of going through everything. And so finally, as he's being wheeled out, he's like kind of talking about how like this call made it made some things clear. And she actually kind of having been a shut in, she like runs outside and like thanks him and apologizes for what happened and that she'll, um, she'll only ever call him a brave knight in person. And uh, he's like, yeah, uh, so I'm not going to be delivering pizzas anymore. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't blame you. And she's like, well, I guess we'll have to get dinner sometime. And I was like, oh, that was sweet. And I even liked yeah. it. It was like, oh, <laughs> Yeah. So Tommy's date uh, comes up next. Uh, Tommy arrives and Grace answers the door at Trevor's because Trevor needed a babysitter. I just love love her. that. And also <laughs> Tommy, slay girl. Yeah, Tommy you look slay. gorgeous. Oh my god! But like when right. Grace answered the door and she was just like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. good. And then like you know, like Tommy's just like. You know, when she says that he needed a sitter and Tommy's just like, well, okay, then I love Grace being like, and don't say no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Trevor comes out and then Melody comes out. And of course, in front of everybody, she's all nice and sweet and says, Tommy looks like a movie star. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So after the mm-hmm. dad walks grace into the kitchen to give her all the emergency numbers because oh my god like the dispatcher doesn't know who to call i, I know she's like i think i got the covered yeah she's like i mm-hmm. definitely know who to call if we need um, and then i was like tommy and madeline are like uh, i feel bad for tommy just because she's being pressured by a kid and she's trying to be an adult about it but she's also not trying to be an adult about it in some ways um and she's like i'm not here to break up with your dad yeah and which of course melody's like well she's like uh we'll see about that oh oh boy it gets worse from there pretty much Um, so before we get more of tommy and trevor we see paul out on a date with asha he's talking to her about the toy truck storyline from season one which i remembered i I can't remember what episode it was but it was almost later in season one i think it might Um, have been the it was either nine or ten that's all i remember i was gonna say that it was i'm not really sure so i thought it was before tk got shot it was after oh no uh, yeah it was after because owen wasn't there that's what i remember oh i I remember it was like when judd was like acting captain oh that's right and then owen showed up the late little while later when the dad got it stuck in his nose okay yep (laughs) he's like really yeah yep so I was like, okay, I love like the story that like he's telling him a story of somebody else that, you know, something that's happened in the past in Lone Star that we remember as Glasgow school. And then um, I really wanted him to bring up the dad if I was being honest. That was literally the funniest yeah. part of the entire. <laughs> it, it was. Oh yeah. I, I forgot about that part, honestly, until you guys mentioned it. 
And like, I kind of forgot about that call, I'm not gonna lie, but when he started talking about it, I instantly went back there and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> it's been a minute. So after they kind of chat about that and have a little laugh, Asha actually goes and pulls out uh, her their elementary school yearbook um, because she wanted to show him the basketball pictures that had been taken of her and him been playing basketball when they were kids. And I could definitely see Paul shutting down. And yeah. I imagine most trans people have a similar situation when people from their past want to bring up times when they were not transitioned. Right. Um, yeah. So he was trying to just kind of like pretend it was okay. And, you know, like he's trying not to get upset about it because, you know, she wasn't doing it on purpose and she probably didn't realize how he did like it be affected by it. Right. It was um, well intentioned. <laughs> And stuff. Yeah, she obviously didn't mean anything bad. Right. It's just because it's not like but they were in like what sixth grade, so yeah, schools are split up by biological sex by that point. So you have the girls' basketball, you have the boys' basketball. Right. They sports are usually uh, but gendered by that point. Yeah, right. and so <laughs> like part of me is like a very small part. I'll just say a very small part is like, did did you? Don't just stop to think about girls and I'm like you know if they reminisce about the past a lot and even if basketball's been brought up before it <clears throat> probably doesn't even didn't even register but um could definitely especially since he's probably gone a while without really having to like see especially photo evidence of yeah. uh, when he presented as a fab I'm um, imagining so. So Paul transitioned while he was on the job being a firefighter and he's 38 about. So he's probably been transitioned like almost 20 years. Um, So yeah, I can imagine. And I feel bad. I feel bad for him just because he's being thrown at this. I also feel like the way he was reacting, like, okay, have you ever actually processed through what it would happen if this ever came up? Or did you just like shut that part of your life out of you and just like, you never want to talk about it again? Like, I feel like there may be some more future talks with Paul in regards to that. Um, right. Which I'm but, here uh, for it because I think oh, these yeah. conversations are so important, okay. especially since having a lot of my friend group who are non gender conforming or trans, and also my own gender being a little lucky lucky itself, but that's a mm-hmm. whole nother thing. Um, yeah. But I am by no means trans, so I can't relate to any of this, but hearing some of their stories, I'm like, right. hmm. Mm-hmm. But it definitely, especially since he went to Texas, a place where no one, you'd think no one could possibly have known him mm-hmm. before he transitioned. And so I probably didn't register the shock of someone mm-hmm. knowing him right. when he was presented as a fab. And I think this is like, as you're saying, it's starting to smack him on the face a little bit that, oh, yeah. there is well, another side to this. And he's also in Texas, which is all pretty far from Chicago. So it would Yeah. That's so I in I more ways than one. I was yeah. about to say the same thing. <laughs> and I personally, if I was that far away from home, especially in the different communities that I would be in like that, the switch, I don't think I would expect to bump into anybody that I went to school with. So <laughs> yeah. I can only imagine how Paul is feeling about this. Yeah. And especially like- you you have to like the, the fact that she was able to pick out someone that she had known when they presented as female in sixth grade. Yeah, out of a forty-year-old. Yeah, basically, yeah. Like, damn, girl, I want your recognition skills, but also like, <laughs> yeah, wow, damn, yeah. okay, like, yeah. I think with this was that like you when she brought out that yearbook, you saw his face go blank. You mm-hmm. saw. In, in his face mm, and like when i was watching yeah. this i was like oh shit is this gonna be the end because like it's no fault to her because like the, it was very well yeah. intentioned but it was also right. like it's so hard for him and like you know seeing like obviously like having that brought up and she's like oh but look at this but look at us and it's just like mm. and like it's i'm also like i want to be like read the room but i'm also like <laughs> It was very yeah. well, and like yeah. it's not yeah. her fault. Like she, in her mind, she wanted to just look back at like the past and like reminisce. But like right. for him, yeah. that's just so much yeah. more like difficult to like look at back right. then. 
Well, even I, who am very in tune to people's emotions, usually, even I, when I'm super excited about something, it can take me a little bit to realize when someone else isn't matching mine or maybe even fake. And that's what that's when they're not faking it. When they're faking it, it's harder. And he was clearly trying to act like it wasn't bothering him. Yeah. Yeah, I really <laughs> hope that like they have like he brings this up to her and like they have yeah. a conversation about it like I do too. In, in a future episode because I think that would be really important. And like yeah. I understand why he didn't then obviously that was like it was very emotional. You could tell like he was mm-hmm. trying so hard not to show up. You could tell the second that your book was ripped out, he was just like, "Oh, okay." Right. Yeah. Yep. So we move on to Tommy and Trevor on their date and they're starting to talk and Tommy gets to a point where she's trying to tell Trevor about what Melody's been doing. And of course, they get a call from Grace that Melody is sick. Of course she is. (laughs) I'm like, of course she is. So they, of course, rush back home to find her not feeling well and curled up on the couch and wanting her daddy. And, uh, you know, she doesn't have a fever. She's fine. And all of a sudden she just got sick. And so Tommy, you know, says, well, I'll check her over and <laughs> comes up with this fake disease with a very odd treatment because <laughs> she's, uh, I loved this. She I know. quickly realized this was, uh, Melody's all for attention and, um, like milk hot sauce pickle juice i don't even remember what else was in it and i told my roommates like tabasco tabasco yeah there's hot sauce in it uh yeah so it was disgusting and they're like oh this will be this will treat it and tommy's like if you you know give this up now and you won't have to drink it and melody's like bring it (laughs) so pretty much she actually (laughs) drinks it I would throw up before I would drink that. Oh my god. No. I want to throw could tell up just her face when she it. smelled it. Yeah, she that that thing must have smelled terrible. And I'm like, yeah. just the thought of it is making me want to gag right now. Right? It's so nasty. I would not you would you couldn't pay me a billion dollars to drink that. Oh god. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that's just I I draw the line and I have pickles like, oh, that's like my least favorite thing ever. Yeah, I and I, I think Grace caught on as soon as they like start. She started listing off the ingredients because I think Grace finally caught on. She realized that she wasn't. This wasn't real. I'm like I, I had a. I think I struggled with this because I'm like, you're a 50 year old adult, yeah. literally stooping down to the age of a child to compete. I'm like, when did the what? It's like, but when are you gonna have a <clears throat> child have that much power over you? Like, yeah, like come yeah. on. Like, I'm no saint, and I can say that the right person rages war on me, might just wage it back. But a child, I'd be like, yeah. honestly, you have power in the fact that you are an adult, and you don't have to stoop to their level. And right. this would have been Tommy's perfect opportunity to say, well, yeah, this is what's going on. She's not sick. She's just faking it. Yeah. And then I feel like her- you wouldn't believe her, though, in a sense, well, that, because yeah. if she okay. said, oh, she's lying, he would have been like, hmm, is she? Mm, yeah. The, any, honestly, any good parent is going to listen to their child oh, yeah. instead of the person they've been seeing for, what, a few weeks, a month? All right. Yep. <sighs> So before I'd be concerned of... if he actually listened to talk. Right, right, yeah. So before we get more of this storyline, we get the 126 is at the gym in the firehouse. Paul is already there. TK, Nancy, and Mateo show up. It's really weird not having Marshawn show up too. Right. I know. No. She should like, be she here. Could, <clears throat> she could have helped talk to yeah. Paul and actually like... Yeah. 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 Um, and so everybody's asking how his date went and he's like uh he didn't how his night was and he's like he didn't sleep well and they're like oh things must have gone that well mm. and paul's like no not really and they're like and you know he explains that they probably won't be seeing each other again and mateo's like what about all the sparks and he's like yeah sparks 
um, they don't really last too long, do they? Nancy's like, well, what the happened? What happened to Destiny? Paul's like, uh, Destiny's a bunch of bull. And this is personal. So I appreciate it if you guys will stop writing me about it because he was obviously getting tense. Like he was, he didn't want to deal with it um, or talk about it. And they're, here they're teasing him just like they would with anybody. But um, Nancy kind of like puts her hands up. She's like, look, I'm sorry. I think they were all kind of trying to like apologize because obviously something they said bothered him. And then, you know, Owen steps in and he's like, Paul, my office <laughs> was kind of not a, a choice. Mm. Um, and then, you know, so Paul comes into Owen's office and he's like, look, he's like, I know. I said, like, you don't have to say anything, Cap. I'll apologize to them. And Owen's like, yeah, that's a good idea. But he didn't call him into the office to reprimand him. He's like, he just wanted to talk. And uh, Paul's like, yeah, you know, thanks, but I don't need a therapist. And Owen says he could tell that there's some tension and any tension in the firehouse can be brought out into the field, which would not be good um, or safe for anyone. And so Paul, you know, talks about Asha and explains that, you know, kind of everything. But then, you know, she knows everything as in she knows him before he transitioned, which is something he hasn't had to deal with aside from his mom and his sister thus far that we can tell. Mm-hmm. Which I want his mom and sister to come back. That would be a cool like to have them back. It somehow. would. It would be very nice. Um, Owen kind of doesn't get it. And, um, Paul's like, all she wanted to do was, you know, play, you know, remember when, and he's like, like the school play and basketball. And Owen's like, he's like, aren't those happy memories? And he's like, well, the school play wasn't, but his, you know, he was totally into basketball. Like his thing was basketball. And Owen's like, you played basketball. I've never heard you mention to it or have ever seen you play it. So why did you give it up? And he talks about how there's certain parts of him that were tied to his past that he just kind of pushed away and like put aside and figured he'd never go to again. Um, So those doors have kind of been closed. And I don't think that's all healthy mentally um, for him. So yeah, yeah, it's, and, and Owen calls me, he's like, well, you know, Asha has been seen behind those closed doors and it's like, but, you know sounds like you don't want to open them back up and he's like yeah it's kind of a survival mechanism for him which i can understand he was a firefighter when he transitioned that had to have been intense and challenging right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i don't know it's it is a coping mechanism i can't really comment on that sense but like i can imagine that he would want to close that door Mm -hmm. and like i know a lot of people like that's that's it could i don't know i can't say it won't work like i have to say i'm not gonna comment on that since i don't know but like right. i can understand his view like why he would want to close that door and not open it up and how hard it would be to open it up mm-hmm. yeah. yeah like i'm sympathetic to oh yeah his struggles mm-hmm. all right and i you know we like like we said earlier you know none of us can truly understand what it's like to transition yeah um so yeah i this next scene is is i think bothered me even more um so jed and tommy are at the station and he kind of teases her about the crazy milkshake that she had melody make and how he heard that it made her cry and um, he's like that's dark and tommy's like (laughs) Uh, he's like i took your advice because jed was the one that was kind of like you know you need to stoop down to her level kind of thing and and she's like, wow, I've never seen you go dark, like all Tommy Dearest dark. I know. Like, oh, and Tommy's there's... like, it was one tear. Yeah. <laughs> but before they can finish their conversation, guess who shows up? Melody. And so she decides she agrees to talk to her in private. And so they go sit down. And at the dinner that they had at the beginning of the episode, Uncle Julius had been mentioned because Tommy had said that she hadn't brought anybody home since their dad had passed away. And they're like, but what about Uncle Julius? And oh, Tommy was like, well, he's your uncle. It's different. Trying to like cover up the fact that they had anything else going on. Um, So Melody remembered that. And apparently she's going to the same school that Evie, uh, Izzy and Evie are. And how the girls talked about how they saw Uncle Julius and their mom doing things. And I knew she was lying. I don't buy that. Uh, She was lying through her freaking teeth. Ugh, that totally was. And Tommy's like, you know, what we did was behind closed doors we made sure the girls never saw and then and she's like she they never said anything to you did they and she's like nope but now she has she pulls out her phone and has it recording so she has now a recording of her mom their mom admitting that she had things with their uncle yeah and this is when i'm like tommy pull out your phone like why wouldn't i would have my phone out 
I would be recording how evil this little girl is. Right? And then, like, again, the girl's like, you break up with my dad. Like, I'm going to show it to the girls if you don't. And I was like, oh, my God. She's blackmailing an adult. Ah. Yeah, that's, that's something. Yeah. Yeah. So Tommy goes to talk to Grace at work. <laughs> and I love Grace's comment about, it's like, why do I feel like this is going to be the worst emergency I've had to deal with? Yeah, day? like the biggest emergency, <laughs> I think, is what she said. Yeah. I was like, um, yep, that sounds yeah, about much. right. So she's, you know, telling her about how Melody showed up and that she's going to tell her dad and the girls that she had a fling with, you know, her dead husband's baby brother. And Grace is like, I knew she was, she, I could tell she was evil, but how can she make that up? And tell me just because it, like, so Grace didn't even know. <laughs> I know, that's so funny. I was like, how do they not know? I mean, I can understand why she wouldn't want to bring that right. up. That's just like, you know, a lot, a lot yeah. of people would look at her like, are you, like, you right. did what now? Like, yeah. and stuff. Like, people would, do, I feel like people, like, some people, I don't think Grace would do this, but some people right. would shame her for that. Yeah, it's possible. We kind of, I mean, in, previously in the episode, Grace had said, you know, you need to tell Trevor what's going on. But Tommy kind of does some processing. And so she shows up at, Trevor's place and I kind of asks where Melody is and he's like well I guess she's sleeping in today so she's um starts talking to him and literally tells him about Julius and how after her husband passed away Julius was there they had a fling and Trevor's like as long as it's in the past I don't care he's like it is in the past right yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's being brought up in the present but right um but she decides to break up with trevor because you know citing that they moved too fast um Uh, before they could really process or talk about it um melody runs in talking about how she doesn't feel good and tommy's like uh you can stop you win and melody's like no it really hurts this time trevor's like what do you mean (laughs) you won and what do you mean this time (laughs) And Melody's, Melody's like, it's your stomach. And at first, yeah, I was like, I think it's like, okay, what's wrong? Is it gallbladder, appendix? And then Tommy's like, kind of all of a sudden, she's like, let me go to your room with you. Well, she was like, does it come in waves? And this is right. when I was like, oh, okay. Like, I know what's going yeah, on Yeah, that now. was about the point yeah. where I was like, oh. That was like every woman watching this episode and being like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep, she's having her first set of cramps with her period. And so she, Tommy, let no, she takes Tommy into her room and she goes in the bathroom and they start talking. And um, regardless of, you know, how Tommy felt about what Melody was doing to her, she still was there for her. And, you know, she was, they kind of talk and Melody explains, she's like, I understand. She's like, I broke up with your dad. And, you know, I understand you, you know, you, because my parents are divorced um, and that her having, um, she'll be able to talk to her mom about like cramps and all the female stuff and then melody i think i can't remember how she said it but she kind of was like can you like undo the breakup <laughs> yeah and like she had said that like the reason why she was acting how she was was because you know like tommy's the first person her dad has dated since the divorce so she was mm-hmm. mad and yeah. she like was sorry and then like after they they had a good talk and i was like okay mm-hmm. i'm happy with this ending because i don't know like this like it was a very like this it was a very good like storyline to have and stuff like it was interesting and like i'm just glad where we ended i was really like i didn't think they were gonna break up actually but i was just like i don't know where this is going yeah and yeah and i'm glad that tommy said she's like we can talk to your dad but she's like i'm not gonna do it alone Um, yeah which is good because like you guys said earlier trevor was probably not gonna believe tommy with what melody was doing so the only way he was gonna believe it is if melody actually said what she was doing so i'm glad that was an agreement and our next little scene which this whole scene was amazing i loved it oh favorite so we see a basketball bouncing over to paul on the floor and paul catches it he's getting dressed to go home from the shift it looks like and he looks up and sees owen and he's like you know i don't think i need exposure therapy he's like i'm not afraid of basketballs (laughs) i know (laughs) um but i love this like what Owen shares he's like there was a four-year period when TK was little where he didn't go to a single of his single one of his winter concerts at school and Paul's like uh I can see why you didn't want to see a bunch of four-year-olds uh singing we three kings and then Owen said he did it because it was more of a uh it was too painful 
because he was one of, he was like the only one survivor. And many of the kids that TK went to school with, their dads died in the towers. So he didn't want to like make them feel bad because their dads weren't there. And I was like, okay, that's pulling at the heartstrings a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that whole like, oh, that, that was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, and then the fourth year, Gwen showed up at his house and they'd been divorced a while. And she told them, oh, and you're going, whether you want it or not, you survived, but you're still allowed to enjoy your life. And I think a lot of people who deal with grief and um, survivor's guilt, they don't feel like they should be living their life. So they kind of shy away. They become these introverts. I think that's what Owen had done. And so that was Gwen's way. And so this is Owen's way of kind of pulling Paul out of his shell a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then Owen's like, come on, I want to show you something. And he got a basketball hoop for the station. This was freaking awesome. So Owen and Paul start playing basketball. And then Judd, Marjan, or what? I just said it. See, I miss her. It's not right to not have her there. Um, Mateo, Nancy, CK, and Judd come out. And they like all end up being like this three on three game. And it was so good. And like, you could see people, other people at the station, like crowding around him, like clapping and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is so good. It was so good. Like, Mm -hmm. I loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite parts of the episode. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's for sure. Watching Paul keep shooting baskets. And like, I think TK came out and he's like, Dad, I'm on your team. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We needed this. Oh, we needed this. Um, And so, our kind of, I I think, I mean, the show kind of ended with Tommy and Trevor and all three girls are out and they're getting ice cream. And apparently they've, the air with everything that happens and tommy's like see she's like i knew we could have some fun together because that's what tommy was looking for the whole time she was looking to have you know fun with the girls all three of them and you know be this blended family of some you know granted her and trevor just started dating but they seemed to like each other and yeah oh no i thought it was an okay episode i i don't know i have a lot of I things liked to it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a bad episode. It was a good episode. We had some great moments in there. I just, I didn't really like the Melody Tommy competition, whatever you want to call it. I didn't like that. Yeah, that was, I mean, it ended up okay. So, like, it was fine. But I don't know. I feel like I I just really liked it because we got, like, a lot of, like, Paul and a lot of storylines that, for him, we've been needing. We've been wanting. Yeah for a long time so for me like it was good we got some like i it was very like this honestly this episode gave me like season one feelings just because it was very like honestly very family very yeah family character oriented where the calls were just like in the background mm-hmm. and like there were just so <laughs> many callbacks in this episode like unintentionally but also like maybe intentionally because like you know the two calls that like were in the middle of each other were literally like what a wait <laughs> when TK right. got shot yeah and then like the gym scene was just like 105 for me and just I don't know it just gave me very like season one feelings and I was like oh good vibes good vibes it was like family good vibes it was yeah like it was um it was a little bit of a slower episode of after the last few, but that's not a bad thing. Right. It's leading up to stuff. It's wrap. It's adding to some storylines we've sort of been neglecting or not focusing on as much. And yeah, just we have the one twenty six family, and it yeah, just feel good, feel good vibes. Not too terribly complicated. I'm here right. for it. Right. Yeah, I'm, it wasn't a terrible episode. I it was good. There was great elements to it. Um, yeah. I, I love seeing a little more of Paul's past. I love seeing them playing basketball in the firehouse and having something fun. Because I think we've seen something similar to that on 911 or just like family bonding. I feel like we don't get that as much anymore. So this was it was good. And again, I'll say it again. I miss Marshawn. <laughs> yeah. So she is missed. Yes. Do we have some fan thoughts to talk about? And in case you guys uh, don't know, Katie does awesome with sending out links to um, uh, a form so you can fill it out if you have thoughts and ideas um, for the podcast or for the final thoughts. So you should check that out and keep an eye on our social medias for it. Yeah, for sure. So amazing episode. Good episode. That little girl was evil. I want to suck. <laughs> that's what TJ said. And I'm like, yeah, that's really. <laughs> 
Hateable. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I didn't catch it. <laughs> Evil little girl. I wanted to know that. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. That was spot on. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. I love it. So our promo was very thin. <laughs> um, it literally is like two scenes. Uh, the first one is Marjan's running across some broken down RV on the side of the road. And she tells the couple that's stranded that she can help them patch up whatever's wrong. And after she's done, they go start to go on their way. And Marjan looks at a napkin that the woman given her and she's like, help, I'm like, he's going to kill me. Um, So then that's obviously a storyline she's going to be a part of. And then the other scene is there's a car has flown off the road and is now stuck in a power line. Uh, or it's a telephone pole one of the two i think it's a power line because i remember him them saying that there was oh like, yeah because like yeah there's like thousands of ju- like jewels running through them or something like that yeah um i'm kind of with ronan on this one he's like because we keep he keeps saying that episode eight is like a tarless episode yet we got nothing in the promo and it's all supposed to be about the wedding planning and i think ronan tweeted he's like uh, tarlo's wedding promo team there's a wedding <laughs> it's like literally nothing and no drops of hints we know andre is gonna be back owen's gonna be like dadzilla yeah um, like the synopsis was way better like when i read yeah. that like last week i was like oh yeah it's like owen turns into a dadzilla and helping plan tk and carlos's wedding and i was just like okay that is literally and like they the stills for this episode just dropped today and it's like all tarlos and i'm like I know, I love it. I'm here for Andre it. I was back. like, thank God. Yes. Can you imagine if they messed that up? Oh. <laughs> they would not. Rodan would have, like, went after them. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Of course. I just love how, like, yeah, how, like, honest and nonchalant he is with this because he's just like, right. and when he tweeted that, I was like, thank you. Yes, I, I think so, I like, retweeted it. I was like, thank you, yes. Like, literally, like, call it out because this happened last season, too. Yeah. <laughs> At some point. Right. And, like, we love it. Um, so, yeah, excited for the title. Yes, probably. I am, too. I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I'm glad Andrea's going to get back. She sort of sounds like she's going to turn into kind of a momzilla, too. I'm, And I'm also excited at the, the fact that there's multiple scenes with Tarlos, and it's not just, like, one or two big scenes. It's, like, there's three different, like, outfit changes for both of them. So I'm, like, we get, like, three big scenes with all of them. I'm, like, I'm I'm down. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm down like people are always talking about like it and i'm like somebody today said something like oh like we were supposed to get like a double date and i'm like where in the hell did you hear about that because like i don't believe it there was a double date there were two dates in this episode (laughs) yeah but yeah but somebody was like no no in the next one oh okay i'm like where did you hear that because i that's news to me and i'm also like I don't know just people are like oh but they use these outfits before so this must not be in the episode and I'm like they can reuse outfits without it being like oh we can't yeah because Deacon and Carlos can definitely wear one thing once and never wear that again seriously though <laughs> it's yeah. like are you kidding I don't want to know how long I've been wearing this particular set of clothes but like that's completely different <laughs> I was like, like you can wear clothes over and over again. Right. I know I could like rotate I just like I get why TK hasn't had as many like repeat outfits because you know what we think is all those hoodies that died in the fire. I know we finally got a hoodie in this episode though, and I was yes. like, I was like, because I had been thinking, where the hell are the hoodies? And I was like, is this gonna be like the lone hoodie season? <laughs> yeah, the only thing I could think of is that it was just because down in California where they're filming was too warm to wear a hoodie. But I've seen Ronan wear hoodies in warm temperatures, so yeah well they yeah and just the fact that that would have only made sense if like you know it was season one when he's literally worn billions of hoodies every season since like he's known for that yes he is a wardrobe team more hoodies please i don't know don't lack don't lack yeah thank you guys so much for listening and joining us be sure to subscribe to the podcast on anchor we're also on spotify apple and google podcasts and everywhere you get your podcasts 
on iTunes and Spotify, please rate us and leave us a review. It would mean a lot to us. You guys can follow the podcast on our socials at 911LS Roundup on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And don't forget to join our Discord server. The link is in the description of the podcast and also in our Instagram bio. You guys can follow me, Katie, F. Love Tarlos, on Instagram and TikTok. You guys can follow me, Grace, at Ronan Rafa 911 on Instagram and at Girl 31 on Twitter. You can follow me, EJ, at EJ8302 on Instagram and Twitter. Bye. Bye. Bye.